the Bank of England has finally cut rates. They've cut base rates by a quarter percent to five percent, still quite high. And this is bearing in mind that their inflation target was reached a couple of months ago, their inflation target of two percent. And it's the first rate cut, believe it or not, since 2020. And we've seen massive amounts of interest rate rises uh, and hold of holding of rates from 2023 to 2024, uh, despite falling inflation, 14 consecutive base rate hikes since December 2021. Uh, bad news for borrowers, obviously, bad news for mortgage holders, bad news for those people coming off of fixed rates. But largely, it's been good news for savers who have benefited from pretty good savers rates, up to 6% uh, that they could get. Now, that's gone now. You're probably looking at saving rates of 5%. But it's still a pretty good rate when you consider if you buy a buy to let property, uh, what would you get in terms of yield around the southeast? Maybe 5% if you're lucky. And that's just the gross yield. That doesn't take into account any voids, repairs, agent fees, maybe service charges that the, that, that the owner, the landlord is paying on, on a block of flats and repairs and all those sorts of things. So what's the real uh, rate of return? Maybe 3 or 4%. And, and then you've got all the aggravation that goes with buy to let and the Labour's Renters' Rights Bill, which I talked about last week. I'll put a link up to that. Now, look, if you like my content, please give me a like, give me a thumbs up, maybe share it, try and get it out there. I, I got uh, something like 9,000 views last week. I'm trying to get my views up and get the popularity of this podcast up to get it out to more people. OK, so where are we then? I'm going to show you a couple of graphs to show you uh, rates and that sort of thing. What most people are obviously concerned with is mortgage rates, right? That's what people immediately think. And obviously borrowing affects businesses, it affects business overdrafts, it affects people uh, taking out various kinds of loans and credit cards as well. But look, the average uh, two-year fixed rate mortgage is now 5.78. According to Money Facts, the average five-year fixed rate is 5.39. Still toppy, still a bit high, uh, and, and brokers are telling me now that uh, rates are already coming down, that the lenders are starting to reduce rates. One of them was Lloyd's, uh, Halifax Group, the big one, uh, Santander. These sorts of lenders are already starting to cut rates uh, because of the competition. They want to lend and lending is, has, has come down a bit. Um, but right now, the lowest five year fixed rate is 3.99 percent and the lowest two year fixed rate is 4.42. Um, but watch out for these excessive arrangement fees. You see a headline rate maybe of 3% but with a 5% fee it's really just a, a rip off in disguise uh, because the 5% fee makes the equivalent rate much higher because you've got a 5% fee maybe on a two or five year deal well that's adding uh, you know a percent a year to, to the rate in effect so watch out for those and also these headline rates tend to be for the the, the plum side of the market they're cherry picking the people who've got large deposits and this is for for purchases obviously Buy to let is, is another is another story. Um, so you've got to look for the best buy to let deal. Um, I, I myself have got a buy to let deal expiring uh, next month. So I'm glad rates have come down. I don't think a quarter percent is going to massively affect rates. I think a lot of the lenders have already been uh, anticipating the, the rate cut anyway. So I don't think we're going to see a huge reduction. And the Bank of England, I, I don't think they're going to massively continue to, in, to reduce rates in the, in the next year or so. But some forecasters are saying that uh, by, by the end of next year, they will continue to, 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 to cut rates, maybe down to 3%. But are we going to see the really low interest rates uh, that we saw in the last 10 years? I, I don't think we're gonna get back to that. Uh, but you know, if you get a rate three, 4%, it's still not bad historically. I remember borrowing on my first mortgage, it went up to 16 and a quarter percent. And, and people considered that 10% was to fix at 10% was a good rate, good rate. And a lot of people did fix at 10 and 12% for five years, and then rates started to tumble. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 you know, they would have loved to have had a rate of five or 4%, but it, it's making buy to let not look so attractive. And in fact, I heard a statistic the other day that buy to let uh, borrowers are the fastest growing uh, in, in terms of repossessions now and, and problems with their mortgage. One of the reasons for this is, um, you know, obviously higher interest rates, but another reason could be Section 24, that George Osborne tax 
uh, on, on landlords that I've talked about in, in several uh, videos. These are for people who've got their properties in their own name. They're no longer getting, they're no longer able to offset, offset the, the mortgage interest against their, their, their gross income, which is standard for any business. So thank you very much, George Osborne. Uh, so some people, I talked to someone the other night at a property networking event. She's got three properties in her own name. She said, it's killing me, you know, that, that, that because the, the, the tax that's added to her income, uh, she's got a good job, is, is making the, the, the interest almost, the, the, the rent that she gets almost null and void because she's not making any profit. And a lot of people are in this position who've got the properties in their own name. Now there is something you can do about that. Check out a link below, you can email me and I'll put you in touch with a specialist firm of chartered tax advisors who can advise you on how to move your properties legally into uh, a limited company without paying capital gains tax. So, so do have a look at that. So the Bank of England finally cut rates. Um, you know, as I said, they've, they've held rates, but they've, they've upped rates, and that's sort of, so. Where where are we for savers? Um, we, you know, higher interest rates has been good, better news for savers. Savers were suffering on low interest rates, and bear in mind, not everybody has a mortgage. You know, a lot of people are retired; they rely on these savings. Uh, but there were um, great deals on savings. National insurance, you know, were paying six point two percent, but but they've they've all gone now. But national insurance, this is the the, the sort of government bank, if you like. Uh, they they are going to bring in a rate of just over five percent. Uh, it's for existing customers, but I think um, they, they will bring out a rate of something like 5.4% if you tie your money up for a year. But a lot of people are still holding on to like their bank accounts in, in the standard big, uh, big four banks. They won't move it. There's, there's this is inertia about moving the money to somewhere else, even though they get the same protection by the government. Uh, so they're losing out massively because the, the big banks on a, a normal deposit account will not pay you very much. They might pay you 2 or 3% if you're lucky. Um, so they're, they're really ripping people off, in fact, uh, because they're, they're certainly quick enough to put up their mortgage rates, they're quick enough to put up their credit card rates, 23, 24% on a credit card. It, it's just ridiculous. Um, and, and overdrafts at 40% rates. So, you know, they should be paying better rates for savers, but frankly, they don't need the savers. The big, the big banks don't need to, to pay higher rates to attract the savers. So that, that's the problem there. Um, so, uh, you, you know, I, I just want a figure from the mail online that there is over 1,638 savings accounts which beat inflation. If inflation at two, is at 2% and you're earning 5%, in real terms, your money is growing by 3% a year, okay? So you can still earn money. And maybe this is why a lot of buy-to-let landlords have said, well, I've just had enough of this. I'm getting out, I'm putting my money into a, a savings account of five and a half, six percent and, and just wait, you know, and wait and see what happens. Because all of the aggravation that the previous government has put on to, to, to landlords, and then now we've got the renters' rights bill, it's replacing the renters' reform bill, it's a subtle difference, rights, reform to rights. Because obviously tenants need more rights, don't they? Maybe not. So anyway, I was at this property meeting the other night. I uh, just want to remind you that the bank, I'll show you a graph on some of these, but the banks are paying the worst rates um, so you know, forget the banks. Uh, Nash Insurance will start to pay uh, good rates on, on bonds for a year. Um, so have a look at that, just check online. Another one here, ten, you put 10,000 pounds into the Union Bank of India and they've got a one year fixed uh, rate bond, give you, give you five, 500 pounds, 554 pounds over a year. Uh, it comes with the full uh, protection of the financial compensation scheme of up to 85 thousand per person if you know oh, who's this bank of india um, you know some of these banks are uh, union bank of india are, are more secure than some of the western banks by the way but you still get the protection don't put your money offshore where you you might not get that protection so have a look at those online check it out because you know you might be looking at this and mortgage rates have already come down and, and some of the savings rates have improved or the, there's new schemes on the market that sort of thing but buy to let um i, I think a lot of people are getting out of buy to let uh they you know, they, they, there's mortgage arrears within the buy-to-let sector, so it, it is causing problems. However, the big companies, that the uh, the Black Rocks, the big uh, hedge funds, the big uh, pension funds, and, and companies like Lloyd's and even John Lewis are massively getting into uh, build-to-rent 
or converting some of their stores. I mean, Lloyd's, I think, have just, uh, John Lewis have just got permission to, to build 300 flats in Bromley above a store. It makes sense in a way, but they, they are going to getting into the rental market in a big way. So the previous government have, have wanted to move uh, buy to let from what they call mom and pop landlords that one minister told me into into companies i guess they can control the companies more they can monitor the tax more closely uh, they've got more control over them so it makes sense to to stop fighting against the tide and move the properties into a limited company where you you can also provide a legacy more easily for for your family members so have a look at my video on the renters rights bill do, do check that out